Hey everyone, and welcome to the next episode of Star Jump Shipyard. This is a show where we take a detailed look at a particular star citizen ship, discuss what is known, speculate on the future, and try to give you an unbiased assessment of where that ship fits within the verse and possibly your hangar. On this episode, we discuss the Banu Merchantman, the capital-sized flying market bazaar that is cherished by the Banu and backers alike. However, this is a ship that was concepted in the early days of the project, so we're going to look at the long journey the ship has had through development and where it might be headed in the future. Before we delve into the details of the Merchantman, let's briefly discuss the alien race behind the ship, the Banu. The Banu are a key alien race in the Star Citizen universe. The Banu are a spacefaring civilization and were the first extrasolar civilization to make contact with humans. They are capable of quantum travel, transversing jump points, and even terraforming planets. They are renowned for their mercantile prowess. The Banu maintain peaceful trade partnerships with all known spacefaring civilizations, even the Vandul. The Banu Protectorate has fostered a strong economic-driven relationship with the UEE, further solidifying their ties through cultural exchange. Beloved by the Banu traders for generations, the Merchantman is a capital-sized marketplace ship. The original concept called for the ship to land on planets or to dock at stations, allowing merchants to showcase their wares directly to potential buyers. The ship was also concepted with enough cargo space to be reliably utilized as a freighter for the Banu. The ship was envisioned to be used across generations and be continuously modified over time. The original concept imagery for the Merchantman was quite varied. Much of the concept imagery featured wildly different hull designs with some sporting more aggressive looks than others. The biggest issue with this being that different backers liked different designs with no real consensus on the final look of the ship. That combined with the metrics for the game changing all but guaranteed a future reconcepting of this very important ship. Now it's important to understand after seeing all this original concept work that when the Merchantman went through its concept redesign phase sometime in 2021, a number of design aspects around the ship changed. We'll get into those specifics later in the video, but the ship grew from its originally stated 160 meters to a new length of 232 meters long, best we can tell. This along with pretty much an entire redesign of the exterior look and feel, the ship had to grow significantly, and one of the big reasons behind this was incorporating the Defender hangar. The overall silhouette remained, but that's about all that survived as CIG sought to bring the ship up to modern standards and metrics. Now let's take a look at the newly concepted Merchantman and take a look at its new specifications. Okay, let's get the Merchantman's currently known dimensions out of the way. With the best available information at the time of this recording, the ship comes in with an estimated beam of around 203 meters, an estimated height of around 80 meters, and an estimated length of 232 meters. These measurements are based off the most up-to-date hollow model presented at last year's IAE event. These hollow models are typically created to scale, and the scale of the Merchantman hollow model squares pretty accurately with the above dimensions. It's important to remember though that this ship is currently paused in its white box phase and will most likely adjust throughout its development. This will be discussed a little later in the video. Because development on the Merchantman was paused when key team members left CIG, there is quite a bit we don't know about the ship's current specifications. At the time of this recording, the ship's computers, life support, power plant, and shield generator are unknown, but have most likely been scaled up from the original concept specs and to being primarily capital components, especially for a ship this big. In addition, the Merchantman's armor and crew requirements are also unknown at the time of this recording. However, based on recent progress with the resource management system, you can bet that this ship will require a minimum crew of at least eight to run the turrets, engineering, piloting, and other roles needed for the ship to perform optimally. From an armament standpoint, the Merchantman is no slouch. The ship is currently known to support two size eight main guns located on the port and starboard nose of the ship, one dual size seven man turret that extends out of the tower at the top of the ship, and lastly, the ship is known to have at least four point defense turrets at the time of this recording. It's very possible the ship will carry additional weaponry, including additional turrets and missiles that are unknown based off the ship's current white box state of development. We do know that the Merchantman is currently shown to have three capital main thrusters, 
two main VTOL thrusters, two retro thrusters, and an unknown amount of maneuvering thrusters. In the Talking Ship CitizenCon 2951 video, John Cruz states the Merchantman's internal cargo capacity sits somewhere close to 2,880 SEU, which makes sense with the ship being classed as a freighter. Now let's peel back the hull and take a look inside the Merchantman so that we can get a better understanding of the ship's internal layout. Starting from the nose of the ship, you can see where the dual size 8 main guns are stored internally before they are deployed. Moving back a little bit, you can see the position of the front main landing gear. Right above the landing gear housing, you can see a small storage area. Below that, you will see a large docking collar that enables the ship to dock with other ships and space stations. Located below that docking collar is the cargo control room. This room looks out over the cargo area and will allow for the manipulation of the 32 SCU cargo boxes by the cargo operator. Below the cargo control room, you can see the forward large VTOL thruster. Adjacent to the cargo control room, you have the primary cargo bay. This room comes complete with enough storage for 2,880 SCU of cargo as well as a Xeon-powered anti-grav elevator capable of taking cargo or even a vehicle up to the cargo bay. Directly above the primary cargo bay, you have the hangar. This is a pretty sizable hangar configuration in order to support the Banu Defender. But naturally, based off the Defender's landed configuration, you can be sure that quite a few different ships should fit comfortably within it. Moving behind the hangar and the primary cargo bay, we start to get into the heart of the ship. To better understand the internal access to both crew and visitors, we will start on the bottom and work our way up. Visiting customers will first be greeted by the public marketplace entrance. This grand walkway that takes you inside the ship also transforms during flight and can act as a fuel scoop via Xeon technology. Moving up the public entrance, you are taken to the main public elevator. Taking this elevator up one level will take you to the first of two public marketplaces supporting up to four storefronts. Moving up another level and customers will be taken to the second of those marketplaces and that features another four storefronts for a grand total of eight storefronts within the ship. Moving up one more level and customers will get access to guest rooms which support extended stays aboard the ship as well as a large conference room to facilitate complex trade negotiations. One interesting feature of this conference room is an observation window that looks out over the primary cargo bay. To venture further throughout the ship, you will need crew access, which takes us back down to the crew entrance and crew elevator. Taking the crew elevator up, we get access to engineering, a large area that looks to encompass multiple decks and occupies a sizable portion in the rear of the ship. Moving up from engineering, we get access to the sanctuary, this crew-only space acts as a place of rest and reflectance for the Banu. Walking forward, we come to a common area that supports the mess hall, crew habs, and medical areas. From this level, we can take the staircases up to the bridge and computer access for the ship. Moving up another flight of stairs, located behind the bridge, is access to the large turret that deploys through the top tower cowling. Now remember, this configuration can and possibly will change once the ship re-enters active development. But this gives us a good idea of how CIG sees the internal layout and flow of the Merchantman. One of the defining features of the ship is its split access depending on if you're a visiting customer or a crew member. Let's talk a bit more about these marketplaces and what the vision is for this type of gameplay. Now that we have taken a look at the Merchantman's original concept development material, and a brief look at its recently reconcepted specs, let's catch up a bit and see where the ship currently sits in CIG's development pipeline. Our first production update came during the SITCON 2951 Talking Ship presentation. John Crew, Ben Curtis, and Paul Jones took some time to walk through the newly revealed reconcepted exterior and interior white box build. The updates showed the new concept pass of the Merchantman had now grown from its original 160 meter length up to around 232 meters, as well as the beam and height adjusting as well. CIG also highlighted the integration of Xeon anti-grav tech for a lot of the transforming elements of the ship, including the hangar bay for the Defender, the size 8 guns mounted on the nose of the ship, 
the main conning tower that houses the man dual turret, the fuel scoop and public entrance, the cargo lift, and other parts and pieces. In order for the ship to fit the standard hangar metrics, several different solutions were devised for the wings to retract to a smaller scale. Originally, the wings folded up, and that was investigated for a while before it looks like that was ultimately changed to more of a telescopic style design. From an armament standpoint, the merchantman's weaponry was shown off. And at the time of the reveal, we were shown the two size 8 main guns located on the nose of the ship, two point defense turrets located near the cockpit canopy, as well as two additional point defense turrets pointing backwards underneath the ship. Additionally, two more dual-mounted remote turrets are located under the wings, and of course the top-mounted man turret that emerges from the merchantman's center tower. At that point during the sitcom presentation, the new materials and concept imagery was finally revealed, showing which direction the proposed final look could take. Using a variety of high design elements and a fusion of various materials such as opal, recessed gold, inset stonework, and other new ideas, the ship was immediately elevated in the minds of many as an almost luxury type ship. Venturing inside the merchantman's new concept imagery showed off an interior bristling with an alien design language that the community had not seen before, especially at this scale. From the flowing, almost 3D printed, single form spaces that move through the rooms, to the unique use of light material integration, the merchantman being shown was something that hadn't been seen before. It was mentioned how a lot of the spaces took an almost tree of life kind of aesthetic in terms of the way in which the space was shaped. This includes the public entrance, the deck configuration, as well as the hallways and even the way furniture was integrated into the rooms. Our next look at the Merchantman occurred in 2022 on an episode of Inside Star Citizen. In this update, CIG showed off the current white box, gray box progress on the ship in engine. This new look included things such as the newly redesigned telescopic wings, initial material tests, the segmenting of the hull paneling, and turret placement. They also showed off the pilot's view from the bridge, which then led to a tour of the interior ship, starting from within the bridge and moving backwards. Here we can see some internal spaces, such as the bridge and corridor that lead on into the escape pods, the center top tower that holds the dual man turret, as well as the get in and get out flow for that turret. They also showed off various corridors and rooms that make up the crew areas of the ship, we were also shown the conference room and mess hall, and the bathrooms as well. CIG then showed off the absolutely massive cargo hold, complete with a viewing area from the conference room. Then of course, they showed off the marketplaces, which included both levels for a total of eight storefronts. And then lastly, an area of the ship that was shown that had a higher level of texture and lighting work done on it, in order to act as a kind of rough art target for the rest of the ship. Our most recent look at the Merchantman came during the 2023 CitizenCon presentation, where Ben Curtis showed off where they were at before pausing its development. Some of this is footage we hadn't seen before. However, it's important to note that what is being shown is mostly similar to the progress that was shown in 2022. This was more of a recap to highlight what progress had been made before production had paused. Let's talk about the role of the Merchantman within Star Citizen's universe and why you might possibly want this ship in your fleet. The Merchantman is first and foremost a ship that allows access to the Marketplace gameplay loop. The ability to host different types of stores, controlled by NPCs, opens up a passive form of income for the player. Within the hundreds of ships currently either concepted or released by CIG, there are only two currently known that allow for marketplace gameplay. That is the Merchantman and the Drake Kraken Privateer. It's hard to have a conversation about the pros and cons of the Merchantman without first talking about the Kraken Privateer and the differences between them. So let's place the Privateer and the Merchantman side by side and see if we can map out the advantages and disadvantages of both. The Merchantman and Privateer are both considered capital sized ships. This means that both ships will require a sizable crew to operate efficiently. Both ships have NPC-controlled marketplaces, 
and the Merchantman has 8 shops versus the Privateer's 10 marketplace shops. The Merchantman has no private marketplaces. However, the Privateer allocates 2 of its 10 shops into a private marketplace area that cannot be scanned and is capable of dealing in things like illicit goods. The Merchantman must land on planetary surfaces in order to open its shops to the public. That is, outside of any ship-to-ship -ship docking scenario. And while the Kraken Privateer can also land on planetary surfaces with its six external landing pads, the Privateer is also capable of allowing multiple customers to visit while the ship is in orbit. This can provide some level of convenience to its customers. The Merchantman is capable of carrying around 2,880 SUU of cargo, while the Privateer is slated to carry around 768 SUU of cargo. In that regard, the Merchantman has the advantage of also being considered a viable freighter. The Merchantman has a listed crew size between 4 to 8 people, and the Privateer has a listed crew size between 1 and 10. Now remember, these crew counts will undoubtedly have to grow as more and more complex systems come online, such as resource management and the full engineering gameplay loop, scanning, manual cargo loading, etc. At the time of making this video, the Merchantman has a war bond price of 650 US dollars. But this price is expected to increase dramatically by the time the ship is flight ready. The Kraken Privateer is currently listed for a war bond price of 1700 US dollars, making it one of the most expensive ships in Star Citizen. So what does all this mean? The Kraken Privateer does have several advantages over the Merchantman, such as pads for customers to land on, two private shops, etc. But the Merchantman has advantages in terms of price and the ability for the ship to double as a very capable freighter with its cargo capacity. Only you will be able to make the judgment on which ship is best for you if you plan on deep diving into the marketplace and enterprise gameplay loops. The biggest issue with the Merchantman is the pause in the development the ship underwent in 2022. The original art and design team that was overseeing the ship's journey through White Box left CIG to pursue other opportunities, and with that the inherited knowledge they had on the Merchantman's design journey. In some ways, the loss of the design team overseeing the Merchantman point towards an unknown future for the ship's design moving forward. A new design team will undoubtedly make decisions and changes to the current work, and that will require the ship to take a few steps back in order for it to ultimately move forward. The positive point, however, is that typically the longer a ship can wait to go into active production, the more feature complete its eventual development will be, since by that time more and more systems and standards will be in place by the CIG ship teams. Another potential issue with the Merchantman is the AI-driven marketplace gameplay loop. There is still much we don't know regarding how that gameplay will work. Will it be worth the upfront costs? Will AI be stable enough to enable the gameplay loop to function reliably? We don't know the answers to these questions, and while the Merchantman is often listed as a freighter, there is no mistaking that what this makes the ship special is the marketplace gameplay loop. The good news is that with base building and manufacturing now being worked on, it was mentioned at last year's CitizenCon that you may be able to operate storefronts from those bases. That may signal that some thinking is occurring on how players will directly influence commerce throughout the verse and could be a precursor to the marketplace gameplay loop that the Merchantman and Privateer will unlock. In conclusion, the Banu Merchantman stands as one of the most anticipated ships in Star Citizen. From its unique alien design to its marketplace gameplay, the Merchantman will be the crown jewel in any citizen's fleet. The ship has the flexibility to act as a long-haul freighter with its massive cargo hold, a diplomatic and or business negotiation hub, and of course, a centerpiece of commerce out in the verse. We don't know when the Merchantman will re-enter active development, and there are concerns amongst the backers regarding the pause in development the ship encountered in late 2022. However, CIG is fully aware of the backers' desire to see this ship get back into the production pipeline and finally finished. And of course, the lofty expectations that exist for such an eagerly awaited Banu ship. All right. That's going to be it for this episode of Star Jump Shipyard. I hope you all enjoyed this look at all we know about the Banu Merchantman. Feel free to leave comments on the next ship you would like to see on the show, as well as like and subscribe to this video. And of course, don't forget to please click the alert bell for this channel as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. This has been Grim, and I'll see you in the verse.